Hi. All right, so picture this. <clears throat> Let's imagine that we're looking at a loudspeaker from the side. So we've got a box back here, and this is the edge of the speaker cone, and you know, the magnet and the assembly would extend into the box a bit. So this is the back of the speaker, this is the front of the speaker, and the listening room is out here. When the speaker moves out, it's compressing the air in front of it. And when it moves in, analogously, it's compressing the air behind it. So if it's in a box, that acoustic energy from the backward motion will be trapped inside of the box. So really all that we hear is the forward motion from, from the positive cycle. And so what that translates to is a projection of sound into the listening room. Um, and that's really why we put speakers in boxes. So imagine for a second that the speaker wasn't in a box. It was just mounted on like a small panel of wood or, or something like that. Um, you know, you're going to have roughly analogous movement backward and forward, but these things, you know, these, these two mo motions are 180 degrees out of phase. Uh, the positive motion and the negative motion are equivalent in magnitude, but of opposite polarity. So I'm not going to try to explain phase and polarity to you right now, like in a nutshell. There's definitely better resources out there than, than me uh, when it comes to that. If you Google around, maybe I can drop some links in the, uh, in the description. When you understand phase at like a very basic level, and I mean, it's, it is difficult to understand at a high level. I certainly don't. Um, and you really don't have to, to, to do this. It's just, you need to understand that out of phase signals will destructively interfere and cancel each other out. So what happens is if you have a loudspeaker driver that's not in a box, you know, we, sometimes we call these open baffle loudspeakers if they're mounted on like a, like a panel, an open panel or something like that, or you know, if the speaker's just suspended in, in the air with no sort of baffle or anything, we might refer to it as operating under free air. Um, and that's when the actual intrinsic behavior of the loudspeaker is the only thing that affects the, the performance we get. If we put it on a baffle, we start to modify how it behaves. And if we put it in a box, then we start to substantially modify how it behaves. So this is why people put speakers in boxes. The speaker moves back and forth, and if there is no box to trap the, um, the, the output energy from the rear of the speaker, it's out of phase with the output from the front, and it's going to destructively interfere. And so what that means is usually when you have phase interference happening, the first frequencies to like disappear and to suffer from that are the lower frequencies. So... I don't know if you've ever taken a speaker driver out of a box and hooked it up and just just run it, you know, like sitting on a on a table or something like that, or, or you know, just hold hold it up, and you'll you'll notice that there's a substantial lack of bass compared to what you would get, uh, what you might be familiar with listening to that driver in in its original box. You're going to notice a substantial reduction in bass. It's just going to be mid range and and you know maybe some treble depending on whether it's a woofer or a squawker or whatever. So um, we can talk about different topologies. You know, we can talk about free air, which is just the driver operating in a sort of ideal capacity, like alone, suspended in the air, almost magically, if you want to imagine that. And then from there, the next step is to mount it on like a flat baffle uh, that's not fully enclosed, just to suspend it. And the effect of that is to kind of separate the rear output from the front output and to what degree they're separated and like down to what frequency, it depends on the size of the baffle and how that relates to like the, the wavelengths of the sound that's being produced by the speaker. So depending on how big the baffle is, larger wavelengths might still be able to wrap around and destructively interfere. And so you won't get very deep bass, but if the baffle is appreciably large, smaller wavelengths will no longer destructively interfere. They'll be pretty fully isolated from each other. And so in this way, you will get more bass extension than you would from the driver's behavior purely in free air. Um, but it's still not going to extend as deeply in most cases as like a sealed box 
which is kind of like the next simplest topology. And that is literally a driver in a sealed box that's ostensibly airtight. It usually has like a small leak so that you know, uh, the, the pressure inside and outside of the box can, those pressures can sort of like slowly equalize, you know, if you brought it up to a mountaintop or something, like give it a few hours, the pressures inside and outside will, will equalize, right? But ostensibly, we can think of it as being airtight and all of the rearward, uh, you know, the energy produced by the rearward motion of the driver is is effectively trapped inside the box, like as efficiently as possible and that prevents it from interfering with the output from the front and so that gives us that gives us more more base extension and really the kind of base extension that we tend to expect uh from like most people's conception of 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 like a familiar sort of common loudspeaker um and then i would say probably the next most uh advanced design would be the addition of a vent or a port to a sealed box and so we call these vented systems or base reflex systems, and they have a port. Um, and I don't want to get too heavily into this. I'll do like another video about like how vented systems work. But basically, by cutting a hole in the box and allowing for the air uh, inside and outside the box to be exchanged in relation to the motion of, of the driver, like through that hole, you can extend the base response, uh, sometimes considerably. So it's not unusual to see ports on like bass guitar cabinets and subwoofers and small bookshelf speakers that use like relatively small woofers usually depend on ports to get like appreciable bass response. Um, but it comes at, it comes at a cost too. Um, the transient response might not be so good. And if you don't design the box well, you can end up with this sort of woofing, honking, like one note bass kind of characteristic that's not ideal so it can certainly color the sound but if done well it can also substantially extend the bass response in a way that's favorable um, and then you know there's more esoteric designs there's transmission lines which are like very sophisticated bass reflex systems um, there's bandpass boxes which are like another take on like a more sophisticated vented box those are pretty common for um, subwoofers for like car audio. Uh, you'll see those sometimes. And there's like isobaric speakers that use drivers in interesting configurations where you'll have like two drivers, like one in front of the other in the same, in the same box. Sometimes they're both facing the same direction. Sometimes they're facing opposite directions and they fire off like either end of the box. Um, those offer some interesting trade-offs and um, maybe the last one I would mention is um, oh I'm sorry I'm blanking right now what do we call them passive radiators a passive radiator is like a third sort of like specialized adaptation of like the vented concept instead of a port you have basically a speaker driver that doesn't have a motor assembly on it it's just a cone that's not able to move itself it just moves in response to the activity of the main woofer in the box and the way that that affects the air in, inside and outside the box. And so it does something similar to what a vent does, um, but it has its own advantages and, and also disadvantages. So I think in the next video, um, now that you kind of understand like the reason why we put drivers in boxes to begin with, we'll talk more in greater detail about like why you would pick a certain type of box over another and we call those topologies so like a sealed speaker is a certain type of topology a vented speaker is a certain type of topology an open baffle you know a base uh, a uh, passive radiator um, an isobaric speaker a bandpass speaker these are all topologies and we want to understand why we would pick one topology over another one um, because they achieve drastically different things. And like I was saying before, when you're doing this, you really have to make like informed trade-offs and like understand that you're not going to be able to build like the perfect speaker. So you have to decide what's important to you and what's not for the given application. And one of the biggest ways that you can make that trade-off is by choosing a certain type of topology over another one. 
vented systems tend to give you better base extension, uh, but they can also tend to be bigger than sealed cabinets. Um, but that's not always the case either. These, these rules can be bent, they just can't be like broken. So in the next video, we'll talk about the different kinds of topologies in more detail, and we'll discuss why you would pick one over the other and like how to make that choice. So thanks for watching. Until next time.